All right, everybody. Um, seems something cool has happened. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, I hope I didn't butcher your name, uh, just came out uh, probably being open to nuclear. I, I, it doesn't watch again, but I haven't heard what she has said yet. So this is going to be uh, a, a, a fresh response. So let's see what she has to say. And afterwards, I'm going to pile on um, trying to give you some extra I don't know inspiration maybe something that you can do so let's go you know you bring up an important uh, element of our energy mix which is nuclear and this is absolutely a critical uh, a critical part of of this conversation and so uh, one thing that I that I would just like to clarify is that the Green New Deal does leave the door open for nuclear you are right we name renewables like wind and solar specifically the door is open for nuclear but we also have to make sure that community input and the and that technology is vetted I do believe that there is a, an open door there okay now that's something that is music to my ears. It's music to many people, uh, many people's ears. Um, so what do I want to, to say about this? So first of all, I'm a closet socialist. People know that. I mean, those who are watching this right now and have never heard me talk about this are either very new or haven't been paying attention long enough, but, but I'm a closet, closet socialist. I do like capitalism, but with restrictions on it. I do like to have, you know, bounds. I don't like the exploitation of humans. Um, I don't like the over-exploitation of resources. Uh, I, I, I do think there should be some kind of a, a you know, uh, some oversight on whether everything that is happening within the marketplace is fair and sustainable. So I really hope that the senator is uh, going to watch this. I, I try to be as brief as possible. So this is what I have prepared for you people. Um, I, I've been working on something new it's not entirely new because it already exists to some extent in the u.s i mean you have nuclear corporations already so i mean but there's so much cool stuff that you can do with nuclear that is that is new and fresh and doesn't look like the age-old utility consumer stuff still has the same dynamic but the ownership is different, who benefits is different, what you can do with the money is different. It's not just going flowing straight into the pockets of rich and wealthy people. But, you know, this is entirely different. So let's see. Welcome to the Nuclear Co-op 2.0, where a local government, all the inhabitants of the community and the worker union own a nuclear power plant. It's not entirely new, but I would like to, I don't know, replant this seed, replant this seed. So this is my socialism stuff. This is the way I see, if you want to consider me as a Marxist or whatever, that's wrong because I'm none of those. I'm not a Stalinist. I'm not a Leninist. I'm, 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 I, I, communism is not my thing. What is my thing is making sure that money gets distrib distri distributed evenly, but not by uh, force. So rich people can be rich, I don't care, but by design. Because, because you have started a cooperation, an organization to make money, yes, but distribute that money along more people people who actually have a stake in the plant operating because they live in the area, because they work at the plant. You know, that that's my idea. That's my idea. So the people own this power plant. Let's suppose that you have a community of 100,000 people that might not necessarily constitute a city of 100,000 people, but it could also be a small city, or two small cities which together have a hundred thousand people 
and they say, you know what, we want to do something daring. We are going to build a nuclear power plant which is going to benefit us, our people, and we can sell carbon-free electricity to all the rest who is interested. So once you have this local nuclear cooperation, which owns this nuclear power plant, you can design it in such a way that you can deliver electricity and that you can deliver heat. You can deliver the heat to the homes, for instance, which makes you eliminate loads and loads and loads of gas usage for the heating of homes alone. Um, but I would take it one step further. I would say everybody who is owner of the plant gets their electricity for free. And let's say that we cap the amount of electricity handed out for free to the owners. It's like about, I don't know, 11 or 12% of all the electricity that is put out annually. Now the nuclear power plant pays taxes. So that's a net benefit for the community because the community gets taxes as well, gets taxes as well, as well. And the profits flow back into the community as well, which is awesome. So, so this is this is my model basically. This is my model. We sell heat, we sell electricity. About 90% of the heat and electricity actually gets sold to people who do not own the plant. And about 10 to 11 percent of the heat and electricity that is produced flows back into the community and this is a huge net benefit for these people so the first thing you know we need to have some kind of a financial basis for this all now if you take a 300 megawatt small modular reactor that will cost you around 700 to 750 million dollars now, I assume a total lead and construction time of seven years. And I say that the cost to run the plan, including paying back the financing at around four or five percent, is five cents per kilowatt hour. And the plant lifespan is 60 years, which is pretty reasonable. I mean, there's already nuclear power plants in the U.S., that have licenses extended up to 80 years. So that's that's a huge benefit to a local community because they have, e even if even if a community wouldn't own a nuclear power plant, uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the, one example is uh, is a nuclear power plant near uh, near Washington. I believe it was Oyster Creek, but please help me if I was wrong on this, but Oyster Creek closed and the local community community collapsed because they lost a huge source of income, which means that it actually hurts a local community if one of these power plants leaves. But if the local community is a co-owner of the nuclear power plant, that would make the bond between those even bigger. They both benefit. The nuclear power plant benefits from the stakeholdership of the local community and the local community benefits because the nuclear power plant delivers stuff to them that they actually need. Heat, electricity, money. So here's my profitability case. So you need power purchase agreements because you want to sell as much electricity as you can produce. Um, I suspect that 100,000 people require uh, 0.125 terawatt hours per year. And if you look at a 300 megawatt reactor, it produces 2.36 terawatt hours per year. So if you look at the, the free delivery of electricity and heat to the people, this zero electricity cost benefit to owners, to the owner community is approximately 26 million dollars per year just in uh costs avoided not having to not having to pay for your electricity is a huge deal is a big big deal so per person that's 226 us dollars per year and if you have a family household of four it's about a thousand dollars per year that you don't have to spend on electricity now that's amazing and you have greatly reduced 
heating costs and risks because you don't have any gas, you don't need any gas infrastructure anymore in your into your homes. I don't know, some people might remember the, the gas explosion in New England uh, last, uh, last fall, last winter. Uh, those risks are gone. It's another great benefit. So we assume that we can sell two terawatt hours out of the 2.36 terawatt hours that we produce each year. And we sell that at a wholesale price of five and a half cents per kilowatt hour. And we produce the electricity, it, it will cost us a five cents per kilowatt hour. So if you could sell two terawatt hours per year, that means that you make a billion, a billion in gross income, gross. So you still have to pay taxes over that gross income. So in the end, you will be, you will make nearly $800 million per year, which you can then distribute not only amongst the 100,000 people that live in the community, but also amongst the people who are in the workers' union and the community, so the, the local government. And you distribute it evenly. So, so you basically pick these three things, these three things, and you take the, you take the 800, 800 million, chop it up into three bits and drop it there, drop it there, drop it there. Then again, distribute evenly and that's that's my social that's my kind of socialism so it's earned it's earned what i would also suggest that people do is set a bit of it aside to uh to stick into the community not necessarily in terms of money but in terms of college funds because you need an influx of college graduates all the time because the nuclear power plant needs new workers some people retire, other people go to different jobs. So you need an influx of college educated people. So I would just suggest to make a college fund for the people in the region, not necessarily just the community, but the people in the region. If they want to work in the community or at the power plant, they can use the college funds to get educated. I would love such an idea, especially in the U.S. where, where education is so incredibly expensive. Uh, I think that would be great. That would be awesome. There's a caveat in this, in this financial scenario because I haven't done the cost for the distribution of the heat. If you want to distribute the heat, you need to you know, build a new uh, infrastructure to pump that warm water through that the people can use. So that's going to cost money. On the other hand, you could provision, you could provision a part of the profits to build that infrastructure. So it will come later, but you can do it. You can, you can, once you have the plant running within 10 years, you can have the entire infrastructure for the heat distribution. So you will eliminate gas usage. You don't force everybody to, you know, buy, uh, a heat pump or something else, but you do it using residual heat from the nuclear process. And then finally, you know, it, it, nuclear, nuclear energy 1.0, that's what we have today. Mainly electricity is produced in a very rare case. Heat is also sold off to communities or brought to communities. Um, you get spent nuclear fuel out of it, which is considered a problem by everybody. And uh, I want to change this paradigm. I want to have nuclear 2.0 in which uh, spent nuclear fuel is always considered a resource that you don't want to throw away in any case, but you want to reuse it. And once you have reused it, you will extract all the stuff out of it that you can get from it. Medical isotopes, isotopes that you need to, for instance, disinfect the mail or help with agriculture, or help with space exploration, or what have you. And then you get, you, you, you still have a little portion of the waste left that you need to babysit for another 300 years, perhaps. And there are ideas of how to do that in a way that people can accept. 
So this is something that the community itself must think about as well. Maybe you can store that on the site where the nuclear power reactor is. Maybe you can perhaps drill a deep borehole and and store it there. There's actually a, a, um, a startup in California who is working on that. And it's also retrievable, so you can stick it down, you can get it up again. So there's, it, there's many interesting things that we can do with nuclear. Um, this is specifically aimed at, uh, at the senator. Uh, yes, he's a senator, right? Uh, or is he a house representative? I'm sorry if I mix that up. I'm Dutch. I'm Dutch. <laughs> uh, but but listen, um, your politics is my flavor. Generally, I don't do politics on this channel. Generally, I want to keep it as technical as possible. But this idea of co-owning a nuclear power plant as a community, getting free electricity and taking the profits making sure that some of the profits get reappropriated for educational purposes and such would be an awesome deal for the people. In any case, thank you for opening the door to nuclear. It's great. It's amazing. Thank you all for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.